Hey y'all, so this morning I finished reading Isabel Gillies, I don't really know how to say her last name, Starry Night. It's, um, that's the author's name, Isabel, I think it's Gillies, I really hope so, I'm not actually sure, but it's Starry Night, and it's a reference to Van Gogh's famous painting. Um, I really liked this book, um, for a lot of reasons, including because the protagonist is 15, but didn't act like a lot of 15 year olds I think we see in YA fiction these days. I feel like a lot of times the 15s are trying to be older than they really are, or not necessarily than they really are, but they're trying to be adults and they want to be done with the kid world and move on and be treated like an adult, um, have privileges like adults and relationships like adults, right? We see that a lot, which is totally valid because that's where you're at when you're 15. You're in that switching motion and you do want to be taken seriously like an adult. But in this book, um, the protagonist, whose name is Ren, W-R-E-N, like the bird, she is 15 and she, not that she's still acting like a child, um, she's not still playing with dolls, for example, or coloring in coloring books or um, watching Blue's Clues? I don't know. <laughs> she's not doing typical ch childish things anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course, she's just at that age, right? But she's also not one of those protagonists that we're seeing a lot of who is trying to be bigger and better and bolder and older. <laughs> um, she, as she and her friends, they're all very close in age, and she has this little group. There's her and three girls, and then a boy in their little group, and their parents are all friends, and so they grew up together. Um, and as things happen and as they're all kind of coming of age, Ren is kind of like, no, we're too young. Like, no, we're too young. She says that over and over. And I love that she still needed her parents and needed validation and wasn't ready completely to jump into the adult world because that's real life. You're not always ready. Um, she herself has this, the whole story is about her relationship with a boy named Nolan. And I really liked them. I really liked their relationship. I liked the way, sorry, bumped the computer. I liked the way it was written. But again, I loved it because as she's going through these experiences of first time real boyfriend and everything that that entails, she, not that she's questioning where things are going, but she's asking a lot of, um, is this okay? Is this what I want? And she's checking in with herself. Nolan, the boy, changes her world view um, just like any major relationship does. And her friends, because they're so close, they're going through completely different things in some ways. And she worries about them. Are they old enough for this? She constantly is going back to, are we ready? Are we actually ready for this? There's, um, a key thing is this red dress that her mother lets her borrow. And as all growing up, she adored this dress, right? And she finally gets to wear it. And she, before she puts it on, she goes, there will never be a time after tonight. There will never be a time. There will never be a before the red dress. Like it's before the red dress and then it'll be after the red dress. And she goes, am I actually ready to wear the red dress? Because she sees like, there's this pivotal moment. I can't go back and be who I was before I wore this amazing dress, right? And I just, ah, I just loved the way that the protagonist thought things through and the way she viewed the world. Um, she also is dyslexic among some other things that have kind of slowed down her learning process. She also has ADD. And so um, that wasn't the focus of the story, but she threw that in like, I'm impulsive because da 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 da. And I have trained myself to hold back and think things through a little bit better, but sometimes I can't, you know, or my ADD medication makes me feel this way. They talk about that a bit in the book. And so again, it's not, I didn't feel like it was a typical YA romance book um, because the character was so different from what we normally see. She was so, so real. I really liked her. Um, I liked her family. She's got a brother named Oliver and a younger sister named Dinah. Dinah has her own cooking show and I loved that little detail in the story. I thought it was really well done. Her parents are great. Her dad works for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, all her friends are totally unique even though they're that whole little clique. And I really like that. And they're 
not only unique in their personalities, but also they're diverse. So that was really nice because we need to see diversity in YA more. So that was good. That was very good. Um, Renda's art, and I loved the way that drawing and art in general were portrayed in this book. I thought it was very nicely done. Her school um, still considers art important. She's in a great art class in the, in the novel. And I just finished reading a different novel where part of the storyline was that the school that the protagonist there went to was cutting all art and music programs. And so it was nice because that's happening in real life where they're getting cut. But so it was nice in this book that her fictional school, fictional unfortunately, takes those into account and thinks that they are important and recognizes their contribution to students and their development and their learning because those really do make a big difference. Um, I have never read anything by Isabel before. Um, let's see. I don't even know what else she's written. Has she written other things? Yes. She wrote, happens every day and a year and six seconds. I don't know anything about those, but since I liked her writing and I liked her characters so much, I'm totally going to go check them out. That's the best thing about coming across random books at the library. You never really know what you're going to get. Um, so I highly recommend it. I thought it was really, really good. Um and very real. It was published in 2014 by Farrar Strauss Giro Books for Young Readers. I've never heard of them. Interesting. Usually I know the publishers. Odd. Whatever. Anyway, really good. Um, some swearing, but clean. Um, just so you're aware, in case you something like that bothers you. Relatively clean. Um, real characters, real coming of age story. It was great. I really liked it. I also liked the way it was narrated because up front she says something about the relationship and then as you go through the beginnings of the relationship she will say things like, um, looking back this really stands out, you know, and it was just kind of, it was an interesting way of narrating that, again, we don't see a lot. This just felt unique to me in a world of not redundant YA stories, but where things are sometimes very mirror image and similar. <laughs> anyway, I recommend it. Starry Night by Isabel Gillies. I don't know how to say her last name. I need to figure that out, of course. But when I do these videos, I don't want a lot of research in them. I want it to really just truly be my thoughts on what I've read, by the way. So of course I could look into the author more, but when I do these videos, I just read and then go because I want you to get the real feeling and the real emotion as I've finished a book. So I try to do them relatively quickly. So there you go. I recommend Starry Night. Um, it was it was good, kind of light, not too heavy. So a good vacation book, I, I would say. Yeah, there you go. Keep reading.